Okay, let's look at some of these properties here of integrals. Um, they're pretty easy, but uh, some of them are going to be really useful. So the first one is pretty basic. If you take the integral from a to a, so in other words, if x doesn't move, then the then we just get zero. Well, that's pretty obvious when you consider how we evaluate this definite integral. We plug in a to the antiderivative, the lower a, and then we subtract what happens when we or sorry, we plug in the upper a and we subtract what happens when we plug in the lower a. Either way, we're going to get zero. So that's not surprising at all. Let's look at the next one. Um, if we take the integral from a to c, that's the same thing as adding the two integrals and when a goes to b and then b goes to c. So let's take a look at that. Let's say this here was a, here's b, and then here is c. So we're going to go from a to b, oops, actually, sorry, let me do this on a different layer so that I can fill everything in nice. So some technical details on my end that you don't need to worry about. Anyways, so from a to b, we're going to fill this in here. That's the integral from a to b. Uh, and then we're going to take the integral from b to c. That's this spot here. If we add the two together, well, that's clearly the same thing as just going from a to c all at once. So um, this isn't uh, this is important because we get to, we're we're going to get to use it. It's particularly useful when we're doing things like taking integrals of piecewise functions, or taking integrals of maybe something like the absolute value where we have to figure out um, where it crosses the x-axis and things like that. We'll see examples. Don't, don't get too wrapped up in that now. But what I'm trying to say is that this is, even though it's obvious, it's important. So what's this next one? If we, go, uh, if we take the integral from a to b, uh, that's the equal to taking the negative of the integral from b to a. So that's kind of weird. Uh, one way we could think about this is if we integrate backwards from b to a. But probably what's better to think of it as is just thinking about the fundamental theorem of calculus. So the left side here, we take the antiderivative, we plug in b, we subtract what happens when we plug in a. Well, on the right side, we have f of a minus f of b. Um, and hopefully it's relatively obvious that these two things are opposite. If you put a negative sign here, you distribute, you get positive, or sorry, negative f of a, positive f of b. That's the same thing that we have on this side. Okay, so we're almost done here. We got two more to go. Um, let's look at, let me start in a different color here. Um, this is, these next two that we're going to look at are so familiar to us from limits and derivatives and uh, sums. If we have k, a constant, times a function, well, we can pull that constant outside the integral. So we've been doing things like this forever. Uh, f of x dx. So a really, really quick example is if we had something like the integral from 0 to 1 of 3x squared, um, we could write this as 3 times the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared. And I forgot my dx's. A lot of teachers will take off for that. Um, okay, so yeah, that's something we've been doing forever. How about the last one here? Oops. After 4 comes 5. Um, this is another one we've been doing forever. If we have the integral of f of x plus g of x, well, we can split these up into two separate integrals. So we'll take the integral of f of x plus the integral of g of x. Okay. And so this is the old familiar saying, uh, the integral of a sum is equal to the sum of the integrals. 
So that's something we've been saying about derivatives and limits and even sums themselves. So um, I, I know that we've already used these two uh, properties in previous videos. Um, I think we have, used, have been using this one a lot where we take the integral piece by piece. Um, okay, so those are some basic properties of integrals. They're tools that we're going to use. Um, these last two we've been already taking for granted and using. And then probably the other one you want to keep your eye on is, is number two. Like I said, it's relatively obvious, but it's going to help us if we have to break up some more complicated integrals. Okay, we'll see examples uh, in future videos. See you then.